Hey everybody, Sean Powers here. Today is just a really quick video because for years I've been using afraid.org for my dynamic DNS for my home address here because the IP that I have from my ISP changes. It's just dynamic. I don't pay for a static IP address, uh, but I still like to have uh, something I can address from the outside, right? Because sometimes I want to connect to my house from the outside, uh, even though my IP address isn't static. Anyway, you're probably familiar with the concept of dynamic DNS. The problem with afraid.org, while it's been free uh, and it continues to be free, it doesn't uh, stay running. Like if you don't log in at every like 90 days or I don't know how long, uh, it just disables your uh, dynamic DNS until you log back in. And that's super annoying because it never times out and stops working when I'm somewhere convenient. Anyway, I started looking for something else. I actually wrote my own and that was fine, but I didn't really like doing that. Um, so I settled on DuckDNS. Uh, everybody else uses DuckDNS. I just never heard of it. Uh, so if you haven't heard of it or you're using something different, I'll show you how easy it is and why you should probably just use DuckDNS. It's just simple. So I'm here at just duckdns.org and you have a couple ways to log in. Oddly, it doesn't look like you can create an account using just your email and, and a password. You have to log in using OAuth, using one of these things here. You used to be able to use Reddit, but that appears to be no longer the case. It says that they were requested not to. Um, you can sign in with Twitter, uh, Gmail, or your Google address. I'm, I'll just do GitHub just because. So I'm gonna click sign in with GitHub. And it allowed me to log in. Actually, I tried it earlier and I had to click authorize, but it did not request any other uh, features than what's publicly available. Like it didn't have access to my GitHub account. It just used that to authenticate. And so now I have to uh, run this CAPTCHA. Uh, apparently just clicking that was enough. And now what I can do is create a free subdomain. I can create up to five subdomains on this same account. And I can do something like uh, nerdlings.duckdns.org, click add domain. And I'll probably uh, blur this out just so I'm not showing my IP address, but it senses my current IP address and then it will uh, serve that out. So nerdlings.duckdns.org dot duckdns.org will point to my home address. Now, I want more than that, right? I actually want to use my own domain. So what I could do is log into my DNS uh, host, like, you know, my nerdlings.net, I own that. So what I can do is log into there and create a C name, which points one domain to another domain. I'll do that really quick. Okay, so I'm actually logged into my Cloudflare account and this nerdlings.social is a domain that I actually uh, don't really use yet. Uh, so what I would do, and it's gonna be different re depending on who your DNS provider is, but I'm just gonna say add record. I'm gonna choose type of C name and I will say the name required. Well, I want it to be home.nerdlings. Well, actually you just have to say home in this one. Uh, you can see up here it says home.nerdlings.social is an alias of, and if you remember, it was nerdlings.duckdns.org. I do not want this proxied. I'm gonna shut that off. That's a cloud uh, Cloudflare feature that I do not want. Time to live, I'm gonna say one minute, uh, because if my IP address changes at home, I want it to update really, really quickly. And so if I do this and click save, now, Whenever we go to home.nerdlings.social, it will automatically point to the same IP address as nerdlings.duckdns.org. Hopefully that makes sense. And heck, I'll show you. I'll probably blur out the IP address. But if we were to say dig home.nerdlings.social and press enter, it's going to give us these results back. And sure enough, it's looked up home.nerdlings.social it found that it is a C name for nerdlings.duckdns.org. They both have a TTL of 60 seconds, meaning every minute they'll refresh. And then he, over here, the C name points to this IP address, which is probably blurred out for you, but that is my IP address. And then the only thing left to do is update DuckDNS regularly, because remember, if my IP address changes, DuckDNS doesn't have any way of knowing about it unless we tell it. And that is where, if you look up here on 
install. We have a whole bunch of different options of ways that they allow us to update it. Anywhere from different routers, you can do it right in your router. We'll just look at Linux cron because Linux cron is a very this channel way of doing things, right? So uh, we have to choose our domain, which is nerdlings, and then it will show us, actually it'll show us that we have to make sure we have certain things installed. But basically all we have to do is run this command with our token, which um, I'm going to erase this token uh, as soon as this video is done being recorded. So, you know, you don't want to use my token, uh, but we run this command in um, cron and it will automatically update our IP address at duckdns.org. In fact, it says every five minutes, according to this line here, it'll just walk you right through doing it. In fact, they do a really nice job of making sure that uh, you get a log so you can see what is that, what actually is going on and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, this is a, a very simplistic way of keeping your dynamic DNS updated for free using DuckDNS. They, you, you can't pay them for it if you want to, although you could support them on Patreon. That's what I ended up using. I've been very, very happy with it. If you're looking for a dynamic DNS solution, uh, it's hard to find anything better than duck DNS. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video.